Hello, it's Laura Jean, and this is the second part of my talking about God, um, responding to Arise Elite with her comment about uh, the holy books not being um, from God, and that the proof that there is no God is that someone like me has ALS. Um, so I, I did a first video just talking about how what I see to be evidence for God existing um, really didn't directly touch too much on why specifically I believe the Bible is to be trusted, although a book that um, was written over thousands of years by a, a large variety of different authors that is cohesive in its presentation of a loving God. Uh, does bear some weight for me. Um, but uh, mostly I went into, through my experiences, why I am convinced that there is a God. And um, now to the harder, harder part of your comment, um, why a God that is made out to be loving would um, inflict someone like me with ALS, which actually is something that um, some really close friends of mine who are Christians also struggle with. So it's it's not like being um, a Christian makes you immune to that question. Um, and and I've had to wrestle with with the why, which is why I have something to say to you. Um, so I, first off, I don't have all the answers and this is just the world as best as I can see it. And, um, and definitely my perspective is from that of Christianity because that is what I believe is true. Um, so why would a loving God give me ALS? I think, um, first off, you have to talk about the value of a human life um, and what gives it its value. And um, you have to look also at goodness um, because you're, you're saying that I have value um, and, and I'm good enough that I should not die um, in this way. And I think we have to, it's hard to look at yourself honestly when it comes to goodness. And I've talked about that before, um, I think in the last video where, you know, like, Am I good? You know, how good do you have to be to be good enough for you not to die from a disease like ALS where you slowly waste away? Um, is it that I just, you know, I could have been a little more kind to my kids and I should have yelled at them that one time and um, <laughs> it wasn't just one time. And I wasn't as gentle as I should have been. Where's the line? You know, does Is my life going to be a tit for tat for what I do right and what I do wrong? And, and the Bible does say that according to our works, we will be judged. So how good is good enough? You know, and, and I have to come down on that saying that I, I know I've done things that are not kind and not good, and I know I've hurt people. And from what I see in the Bible, it's not a, okay, well, I've done this and this and this, and so now I'm good enough. It's, oh, you messed up once, you're not good enough. And that's why that's why there's a need for 
for a, a messiah, for someone to ransom us from the wrong. If you have a holy God who is all good, he can't take evil into himself. And I know I have been bad, I know I've made bad choices, and he can't take that. And so I cannot be good enough in my perspective unless I'm willing to um, believe the Bible and what it says that I will be counted as perfect um, just by believing that I can be covered by Jesus's perfectness. So that's what I have to say about whether I'm good enough. And then secondly, also value. Uh, what gives um, a person value and, and their life of value? Um, and what makes your life good enough? Um, in other words, like how long, how long do I have to live to make my life worthwhile? And what kind of death is okay for a good person. Um, if I live to 70, is that enough? You know, is that um, a time that's adequate for me to die um, from ALS or anything else? Um, what about 50? What about 30? What about 10? Or what about one-year-old or a baby still in the womb? At what point does it become too sad for a human life to end? And I would say it's, it's sad for the 80-year-old to die. It's sad for everyone to die. Death in itself is not a good thing. And we don't want any of us to die. And yet we all die. And so really, there are some more gruesome ways to die than others. ALS is difficult. It's more of a mind game at this point. I know there is some pain associated with it as you move less and have other needs. Um, there are worse ways to die, but still it's not a good way to die. But I would say that even short lives, medium length lives, long lives, they have value. Not because you've lived a long time, but I would say they have value because of the value put on them by who made them. I believe that I have value in my short life so far because God made me and loves me and that's why I believe that even an infant who passes away can have a very meaningful life because of the ways that they are loved by their maker and their family too. So it's not length of days that we need to have to make, to have a good life. And I have to believe from what I've read of the Bible that God's main goal is not for me to live a long life, but it's that I, I learn to be like him and I love and I know his love and that I learn how to or learn learned how to attain to a life that never ends even after I die. But his main goal isn't that I have a long life here.
So in all that, I see that my life is precious. When I look at Jesus' life, he didn't go through an easy death. He didn't have a long life. He had a shorter one than I've had. And when he was confronted with the knowledge of his impending death, He endured all the suffering for the hope that was set before him. And that hope was that good things would come from his death. And, and I'm not any better than my master. And God has set before me something really hard, ALS. And and so I believe I am to approach it like like Jesus did. And is is that not how we all have to approach life? Because we all will die. And it will be difficult. Life will be difficult for us at times. But if you believe that there's a higher purpose in all of this and that our life doesn't end after death, then, then you can endure for the hope set before you. Perhaps God was, wanted me to suffer to bring good to my life. I know a lot of good has come out of my having ALS. And I'm learning how to love better. And perhaps he did it for other people. That other people would see my struggle and be encouraged and maybe know a little more about God's love through my struggle. Uh, I love one part in Job where the author is writing about storms and um, bad weather and, and their difficulty and why, would, why do they happen? And he ends the chapter that, and says whether for correction or his land or for love he causes it to happen. Like even the weather, you know, it it can be for just for the land. You know, the land needed that high wind. But that high wind might have also caused damage to houses and to people. He might have done it for correction. He might have done it for love. That there was something good he wanted to bring out of it. And the fact is we don't know what the reason is exactly why we have the difficult things or the good things in our lives. Um, we can try to figure it out. Um, but I think what it comes down to is, is really just trust. Um, you know, Mary, when she was told that she was going to have a baby without sleeping with any man. She said, and it was going to be a son of the Most High, she said, be it unto me, as you said. She didn't really know what was going to happen all in its entirety but at that point, but she was accepting the unknown from the hand of God. And what that meant was a lot of suffering for her. There were some good times, 
But she had to watch her firstborn son die, a very painful death. Accepting God's will for yourself is not an easy thing. And even Jesus said, not my will, but yours be done. And so that's where I find myself trying to walk in the same path as those I respect from the Bible who have sometimes even known the difficulties of what's before them and have gone forward anyway because God has asked them to. So I wrote this song, actually last year, about halfway through the year, um, as I struggled with people making those kind of comments about the value of my life and how I should not have ALS. And it's mostly drawn out of the book of Job, um, and its title is God is Great. And the, the chorus is, God is great, we know him not. And, and that's what I hold on to. The Bible says he's loving. The Bible says that he's very strong and I really don't understand I really don't know him and how good he is just how good he is and just why he has to do things so hope you enjoy the song God is great God is great God is great, we know him not. God is great, God is great, God is great, we know him not. Who can stand before him, who has given? Given that God should repay when all that is is his. He watches my ways. He sees my steps. According to my work and ways, my God will repay. God is great. God is great. God is great, we know him not. Thy pile of good deeds lie filthy rags. But God is so much greater. Oh God, give me grace. Where is God, my maker, the God who helps? Redeem my work and ways. Make these rags clean and pure. God is great. God is great. God is great. We know him not. When he is quiet, who can come? And when he hides his face, who can behold him? God does not withdraw his eyes from his redeemed. He can do all things and his purpose will stand. God is great. God is great is great. God is great. We know him not. God is great. God is great. God is great. We know him not. So 
so you guys got to see the struggle. Much love to you all. And hope the video was at least a helpful window into my perspective.